I'm going to teach you how to become a better texture artist. Being a beginner in any software can be a really frustrating experience. I was completely on my own when I started learning Substance Painter, and I made a ton of mistakes that could have been easily avoided with a bit of guidance. I know there are a ton of people out there like me with no one to guide them, so in this video I'm going to give you four no bull tips to help you rapidly improve your skills. Let's get right into the first tip. Tip number one. Masks are your best friends. One of the main features that makes Painter so powerful is the ability to dynamically generate masks using data from whatever model you're trying to texture. And every beginner learning Painter needs to grasp this concept, so make sure you understand this. Generators are substances that generate a mask or a material based on the mesh topology using the setup of additional maps in the texture set settings of Substance Painter. Each generator has a set of parameters allowing you to fine tune the resulting mask, allowing you to dynamically create edge wear or add shadows in the cracks of your models, along with a bunch of other things. In simpler terms, mask generators will isolate areas of your mesh automatically and allow you to texture only those parts, making it easier to add edge wear, rust, shadows, and whatever else you can think of. Now, the really cool part about mask generators is that they are non-destructive. This means that you can go back at any point and change its values. So if you are working on texturing your model and you realize that you need to make some changes to your rust layer, you can go back and change it without destroying the rest of the texture. This is the feature that you need to start learning as a beginner and will be essential to your growth as a texture artist. So if you want to learn some beginner friendly lessons to teach you more about how masks and generators can be used intelligently and creatively and a ton of other substance painter lessons, consider getting my 3D coloring book course where I teach you how to create beautiful pieces of art with just a little bit of practice and guidance. I also have a bunch of lessons in the 3D coloring book where I teach you how to create other Ghibli and anime style textures. So if you want to get in early and learn a new and emerging style of 3D art, I'll leave a link in the description. Tip number two, learn how to be a storyteller. One of the most important tips that no one tells beginner texture artists is to learn how to be a good storyteller. Creating textures isn't as simple as slapping on a smart material and just calling it a day. The best texture artists are able to use shape, color, age, and other techniques to bring a model to life and give it personality that it didn't have before. Wherever you are right now, stop and look at all of the objects around you and think about how their imperfections and details are telling you a story. It could be the coffee stains at the bottom of your mug, the melted and burnt wax dripping off of a nearby candle, and dusk gathering on a book on your desk that you've been meaning to read. All of these small details have meaning and substance, and a great artist is able to take those details and exaggerate or highlight them to give the viewer information about the model without having to say a single word. This technique can be seen in any game. Take a look at some of the objects and environments of your favorite game. Take note of the edge wear, the scratches, the dents, and the rust. Everything has been carefully and intentionally put there to communicate to you how this object has been treated over the years. Using rust and scratches to convey age is a really simple and common storytelling tactic. But it goes much deeper than that. It's also about where you would put the rust and scratches on a model, because some areas of an object will get used much more than others. Let's do a quick mental exercise so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Think about a giant wooden door. Where would the wear and tear go? And what parts of the door would be clean and untouched? How would you use age, color, and other techniques to convey the door's history? The first thing you may gravitate to is the door handle itself, which is going to be getting the most use by far. If it's a brass door handle, there would be a ton of wear on the right side of the handle, since most people are right-handed, so that's where each person's hand would contact with the handle if they need to open it. If it's an older door that's seen a lot of use, the bottom of the door would probably be really worn away or chipped away. And if there was a keyhole, there would be scratches around the keyhole where people had struggled to get the key in, especially at night. How many times have you put the key perfectly into the hole? It doesn't happen often. There are a ton of other examples you could use as well, so I would love to hear your ideas and suggestions in the comments. I think this is actually a really awesome topic and I'd love to go into more real examples of good uses of storytelling using textures, and I'm gonna make a video about that in the future. So make sure to subscribe to be notified when that video comes out. Tip number three is understanding how lighting and game engines can affect your textures. So here's a more technical piece of device I wish I knew when I was starting. Substance Painter allows you to change and rotate the lighting while you're working so you can see how different lighting affects your model. However, Substance Painter's default lighting setup actually has a lot of color information in it, so the textures you're actually working on aren't being viewed as their true colors. They're being influenced by the lighting. 
So if you haven't changed your lighting to a more neutral studio white light, that's probably why your textures are coming out a little differently when you export them. So before you start your next project, make sure to change your lighting in Substance Painter to a studio light setting, which only uses white light. This will give you a much more accurate representation of how your textures really look. The same goes for when you move your textures into a game engine. They will come out a little different than how they looked in Substance Painter. So my tip to you is to make sure to frequently export your textures into whatever game engine you're going to be using to see if you need to make any adjustments. It's always so frustrating when you finish making a complicated texture on a model and then you export into Unreal Engine only to realize that everything looks way too metallic and shiny in Unreal Engine. So you have to go back and build the material back up from scratch. I really wish that someone gave me this advice when I was starting, so I hope that tip saves someone at least a bit of time. Tip number four is to build your own material library. Not only is it super important to be a talented texture artist, but being able to work quickly and efficiently is almost just as important, especially in the deadline heavy game industry. And one of the ways you can start speeding up your workflow is to build up your own personal library of textures and learning how to reuse and recycle them and taking advantage of Substance Painter's built-in features will help you do just that. Let's say you're a junior texture artist at a game studio and you've been tasked with creating some garbage for a level that your team's been working on, a very common task that a junior artist will have to do. But there are hundreds and hundreds of assets in the scene and you need to make a bunch of variations for each model. You only have a few days to get it done. So how do you achieve this seemingly impossible task? Well, this is where smart materials come in. Smart materials are custom made materials that intelligently and automatically use preset masks to add imperfections, colors, and other details onto your model without you having to do any work yourself. Remember that first point where I talked about non-destructiveness? Well, this applies to smart materials as well. If you create a simple stone material, you can then save it as a smart material in Substance Painter and apply it to a completely different rock and use sliders and settings to change the color, edge wear, and anything else you want to specify, all while keeping the general language of the asset textures somewhat similar. So here's the main point I'm trying to make about this. Always remember to save your textures as smart materials so you can use them and recycle them later. Eventually, you'll have built up your own personal and custom library of materials that you can use for pretty much any project. I have a very, very strong library of stylized smart materials that cover a huge range of textures such as like wood, plastic, stone, and metals. So that means I can create basic stylized textures in a matter of just minutes, saving me hours and hours of time if I were to build these textures from scratch. Substance Painter is such a powerful software, and I really encourage every aspiring texture artist to learn the ins and outs of the software. It'll take a bit of practice Practice, but I am not joking when I say that anyone can learn this. So there are four very quick and simple tips you can use when learning Substance Painter. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.